Hello and welcome. How many books can you fit into an empty backpack? Just one. After that, the backpack isn't empty anymore. In this video, we're going to discover a way to take almost any function and turn it into a power series. And we're going to call that power series a Taylor series. Let's head to the notes to get started. So if a function is going to have a power series representation, what will it have to look like? Well, we can see here that we have a function f of x, and we're saying that we're going to be able to represent this as a power series. So the power series is on the right side of this equal sign, c sub 0 plus c sub 1x plus c 2x squared plus c 3x cubed, and so on. So this is an infinite polynomial, and the c0, c1, c2, and c3 are the coefficients of that infinite polynomial. Well, we can figure out right off the bat what c0 would have to be by plugging in x equals 0. So this is plugging in x equals 0. If we plug it into the left side, we just get f of 0. If we plug it into the right side, notice that all of the terms go to 0, or become 0, except for c0, c sub 0. So on the right side, we just have c sub 0. So the first coefficient, c sub 0, would have to equal f of 0. Now, if this function is differentiable, so this really only works for differentiable functions, uh, functions that are infinitely differentiable, in fact. Uh, if we can take that first derivative, though, notice that c sub 0 goes away. Derivative of constant is 0. If you take the derivative of c1x, you get c1. If you get the derivative of c2x uh, squared, you get 2c2x, because the 2 multiplies in front, and so on. So you end up with something that looks like this. Notice the coefficients are going 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. All right. Well, again, we can figure out now c1 by plugging in x equals 0. Uh, on the left side, we get f prime of 0. And on the right side, all of the terms that have x's attached to them become 0. And all you're left with is c1. So, the first co uh, so c1, that second coefficient, is equal to the first derivative at 0. And you can keep doing this, and we'll try to figure out if there's a pattern here. Take another derivative, and c1 disappears. <coughs> now we've got 2c2 uh, alone. That's the only one that doesn't have an x value associated with it. And then all the rest, the powers are going to multiply in front. And here, I'm, I'm not combining the power. I'm not writing 3 times 2 is 6 right here. I'm just going to leave it as 3 times 2, because you'll start to see what's happening to these uh, coefficients uh, in front of each of the, the c1, c2, and c3, the numerical coefficients, that is. So once again, we're going to uh, plug in x equals 0. On the left side, we'll get uh, f double prime of 0. And on the right side, we're just going to get that first term, which is 2c2. Now here, we have to solve for c2 by dividing the 2 over. And we get the second derivative of f at 0 divided by 2. All right, we'll take a third derivative. So here, 2c2 is gone because the constant term disappears when you take the derivative. Now, uh, this x term right here is going to be 3 times 2 times c3. And then the x squared term, a 2 will multiply in front. So now we have 4 times 3 times 2, and so on. So then we find c sub 3 by plugging in x equals 0. So we get the third derivative at 0 on the left side. You can start to see the pattern there. It's just all the derivatives with 0 plugged in. And then we just get that, that first term left over. So that's 3 times 2 times c sub 3. Divide the 3 times 2 over, and we've got the third derivative at 0 over 3 times 2. That'll be our, uh, looks like our fourth uh, c value. Now, uh, if we wanted to find c sub 4, we would repeat the process. And without writing out all of uh, c sub 4, uh, just note that it would be the 4 times 3 times 2 times c sub 4 would be the constant term after we take the derivative. And then on the left side, we would get the fourth derivative. This is how you write the fourth derivative. You start writing a little parenthesis with a new number uh, 4 inside instead of 4 primes. It just starts to get annoying after a while. So there's the fourth derivative of the function at x equals 0. And on the right side, we just have uh, that constant term that we're going to get after we take the derivative of the third derivative. So then solving for c sub 4, we divide the 4 times 3 times 2 over. Now you can maybe start to see why we're writing them out as 4 times 3 times 2. 
you might think about what that looks like, something we've been encountering a lot in chapter 11. That looks like a factorial. So in general, you can actually write the nth coefficient, so c sub n, it's going to be equal to, well, it, the, the number here seems to match what, which derivative we're looking at. So if there's a 4 there, it's a fourth derivative. If there's a 3 here, there's a third derivative. If there's a 2, there's a second derivative. So if there's an n, and it's the nth derivative evaluated at 0, divided by, and now it starts to look like a factorial on the bottom. And if you look back at, at what we had before, we can kind of see that. Here you could write over 0 factorial. That would be divided by 1. And then c sub 1 over 1 factorial, that would be like dividing by 1 as well. Here's uh, c sub, uh, for c sub 2, we're going to have uh, the second derivative of 0 um, divided by 2 factorial. I probably should have put the 0 factorial and the 1 factorial under the f uh, of 0 and f prime of 0. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but you can see that under each of these derivatives, you're going to have the next derivative, so uh, the next factorial. So here under uh, the c sub 3 uh, under the uh, third derivative, we're going to have a 3 factorial. So in general, we're gonna, under the nth derivative, we're going to have an n factorial. All right, so this gives us the all of the coefficients. It uh, gives us a formula for those coefficients. So now we can write our function as this power series, the power series of the nth derivative of f at 0 divided by n factorial, and then times x to the n, because the x values, uh, the the um, uh, x part of it is just increasing in power uh, every single time you go from one term to the next. And this is as n goes from 0 to infinity. There are an infinite number of terms in this series expansion. Now if we wanted to write it out in expanded form, we could write this is f of 0 plus f prime of 0 over 1 factorial times x plus the second derivative of 0 uh, over 2 factorial times x squared and so on. This would be the expanded form, but mostly we'll be looking at the summation version, summation notation version of it. Now this is doing what, exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to be able to take a function and represent it as a power series, and this is how you do it. You just have to be able to figure out the uh, derivatives of that function and evaluate them at zero. And the rest of it's not too bad, just divided by n factorial and then times x to the n. So this is called the Taylor series of f at 0. It's either the summation notation version or the expanded version. Uh, you can write it either way. Both of these are the Taylor series of a function at uh, 0, at a center of 0. It's also called the Maclaurin series of f when the center is at 0. If you put the center at a different place than 0, so let's say x equals a, remember power series can have a different center, um, then it's the same kind of process, it's just that uh, here instead of plugging in x equals 0, you plug in x equals a, and then you'd have f of a right here, and f prime of a, and so on. So you're going to get the nth, fa uh, nth derivative at a, and then you'll have x minus a to the n, if that's what your, uh, the center of your power series is. So this kind of situation where we have a um, power series expansion of a function like this, uh, with a different center than 0, so it could be center of 1 or 2 or uh, even pi if you wanted, just anything but 0, then that would be called the Taylor series of the function at whatever that center is, so at a. So the Maclaurin series, again, that's just a special case of the Taylor series when the center is at 0. You could either call it a Taylor series with a center of 0, or you could call it, uh, as, it's, as it's called a lot of times, the Maclaurin series of the function, which assumes a center of 0. We'll draw a picture of, of that in just a moment. But let's head into example 1, which says find the Maclaurin series. There's the Maclaurin series, so that means the center is going to be at 0. Uh, the Maclaurin series of uh, f of x equals e to the x using the definition of the Maclaurin series. The definition it's talking about is this definition right here. It's the, the expansion uh, as opposed to uh, finding uh, finding the Maclaurin series by looking it up in a table and perhaps modifying it. This is like going back to the definition, which is what we just wrote up here. It's this summation where you have to find the nth derivative evaluated at zero and so on. Then we're going to find the radius of convergence. Let's check it out. The first thing we'll note is if we look at our function, 
it's e to the x, and that's our favorite function to take derivatives of, because all the derivatives are e to the x. Right? The nth derivative of e to the x, uh, the nth uh, derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And so if we plug in 0 into the nth derivative, you get e to the 0, which is 1. So this gives us what we need to plug into our Taylor series at 0, or uh, also called the Maclaurin series. It gives us what we need to put right here on the top of this fraction. We're going to just put 1. So we're going to have, uh, let's write it out though. Let's write out the definition of the Maclaurin series, aka Taylor series at center 0. So we have 1 over n factorial x to the n. And I'm just going to write it in a single fraction. You don't really have to do this, but a lot of times it's shown this way. So here we have it. If we wanted to write it in expanded form, it would look something like this. Uh, if you plug in n equals 0, you'll get 1, and then plus x over 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial, and so on. So that is another way of writing e to the x. It's pretty amazing. e to the x has a really nice power series expansion. It's just 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. And if you were to uh, plug in an x value into here, and then plug, it, uh, as plug in an x value into this power series, this would compute for you e to that x value. It's pretty amazing that you can write it out as an infinite polynomial like this. And that uh, infinite polynomial, when you plug in an x value, is going to converge to the outputs of e to the x. But let's see what the radius of convergence is. What x values can we plug in here uh, such that this power series is actually going to converge? That's going to be the second part. Well, we'll use the ratio test to find out. To use the ratio test. That's our good friend when we have factorials, after all. We're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. That's our a sub n plus 1. And then we have divided by a sub n, so that's multiplied by the reciprocal of a sub n. Now you can pop off an n plus 1 factor, and you'll have an n factorial left that'll cancel off with this n factorial. In fact, what I'm going to do is just do that and say that we have an n plus 1 left. And then we'll cancel off n of these x's, and we'll have a single n left on top. So at the end of all this cancellation, we've got the absolute value of x over n plus 1. The absolute values don't do anything to the n plus 1 because n is going to positive infinity, so n plus 1 is a positive quantity. And this is going to approach 0, no matter what. Uh, if you fix an x value into here, doesn't matter. The bottom is going to be going to infinity, and so whatever that number is over, uh, over infinity is going to be dragged down to 0. So this is for all x. So our radius of convergence, our interval of convergence is negative infinity to infinity, and so our radius of convergence is infinity. That means that we can plug in any number, any x value, any real numbered x value, into the power series expansion for e to the x, and it will give us uh, exactly what e to that number is. So we could plug in 100 here and, and over here on the left, and whatever that power series uh, expansion turns out to give you, when you plug in x equals 100, is what e to the 100 is equal to. Okay. Now, example 2 says find the Taylor series for e to the x at a equals 2, given your results from the previous example. Well, here we had uh, the Maclaurin series because our center was at 0. But if we want a center of 2, the only thing that really changes is that you just put in a 2 in here, and you'll have an x minus your center of 2. So we can start off by writing, this will look like 
the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of the nth derivative of f at 2 and then over n factorial that'll stay the same and then times x minus 2 to the n. So notice the only things that changed from our Maclaurin series i.e. Taylor series centered at 0 and the Taylor series centered at 2 was just this uh, number inside the parentheses of the uh, nth derivative of the function so two, 0 turned into a 2 and then instead of an x you've got an x minus 2. If we want our power series to be centered at 2 then you got to put an x minus 2. Okay well the nth derivative at 2 is not too bad to find out because we know the nth derivative at any x value just plug in a 2 and it's e squared is what that fraction will be on the top. So you'll have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of e squared over n factorial and then times x minus 2 to the n. So there's a Taylor series of e to the x centered at 2. Now one last thing before we uh, bring this video to a close <laughs> is to try to map out, give a visual representation for the differences between the, the power series, uh, Taylor series, and Maclaurin series. So we'll start with the power series. Let's see if I can fit these all here in one, one turn. So the power series are most general. Power series, I'll just write power. Here, c sub n, the coefficients, can be anything. So with power series, the coefficient c sub n can be anything. With Taylor series, which are a special type of power series, the coefficients, let me mark these in, in a slightly different color, <laughs> red is very much different than this. So the coefficients here of the Taylor series are going to be the nth derivative at your center, a, over n factorial. So Taylor series have a particular kind of coefficient pattern, and that's the pattern right there. That's the pattern. So Taylor series is a particular kind of power series, ones with those coefficients. And a Maclaurin series is a kind of Taylor series that has uh, even, even more uh, of a restriction. So Maclaurin series, the coefficients will be the nth derivative at 0 over n factorial. Let me write that n a little better. So a Maclaurin series is a Taylor series. A Maclaurin series is also a power series, uh, but a power series is not necessarily a Maclaurin series. So there are some power series that you know are kind of like out here that are not a Taylor series and they're not a Maclaurin series. Okay, so that gives you a, a pretty good picture of of where these things lie. A Maclaurin series is a specific kind of Taylor series, ones with a, a center of zero. So thank you so much for watching this video and see you in the next part.